powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. Now, live from inside the Matt Black Kia Studios, this is Football at Four. Football at Four is powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. And, of course, today we are live at the Gallery Bar Book and Games at Ocean Casino Resort in Atlantic City. Every Monday you can stop out and see us. And, of course, it's Football at Four. Jeff Mocher on this Monday as he joins us right now here on the Sports Bash on 97.3 ESPN. Some of these tech messages are great that have been coming in. Uh, I like uh, this one from Nick in Ocean City. He says, Nick from Seville is out of his mind. That's from Nick in Ocean City. Uh, it's been that kind of day, Jeff Mosher. I don't know what kind of reactions you guys maybe uh, have been getting it inside the birds, but 40-33, uh, it's a very mixed bag of reactions out there today uh, with the Eagles' win. Of course, they score 40 points. Historic night for Jalen Hurts. The offense, second most rushing yards in history. But then, of course, they gave up 33 and I guess people are wondering how they gave up 33. You look at the 33 points they gave up last night and say, this is a troublesome, this is a problem, or is there a little bit further uh, peeling of the onion on that one? I mean, sh- there's no perfect game. It's very You don't win every game 50 to nothing. The Eagles are not a perfect team. They're a really, really good team. But, you know, Kansas City is a great team. They've lost games. Buffalo is considered a very good team. They've lost games, too, and then they – I'm sure have their flaws that have led to those losses as well. We know the Eagles are not a great run defense and um, the Packers were able to run the ball against them. And we also know the Eagles really struggle in special teams and gave the Packers short fields uh, on a couple of their scoring drives that help, you know, a a player like Aaron Rodgers is going to take advantage of that. So uh, I I think the bigger picture though, is that, you know, uh, the Eagles have flaws, but they're 10 and one. So, yeah, we can sit here and nitpick on the flaws. And, and certainly the flaws aren't – are they're real. Like, you can talk about them. But 10 out of 11 times, the Eagles have figured out a way to overcome their flaws and win a game. Yeah, I mean, and we know what some of the flaws are. I guess when you look at last night, you mentioned the short fields. They didn't stop the run all that well. Um, you know, the week couple before – couple turnovers. Yes, the week before, you know, we had wondered, hey, are these guys, Sue and, and uh, Livall Joseph, have they helped – you know, fix some of the issues here. Um, I don't know. Did you look at this team last night as they really struggled in scheme? Did they struggle with the game plan? Why did they struggle against Green Bay's offense, which has struggled this year? Yeah, I mean, first of all, I think last week was a little almost too much too soon, meaning like these two guys who were signed off the street came in and made such a good impact that, it was hard to think that that was really going to be the case for the rest of the year. I mean, if you were being honest with yourself. And I think scheme has something to do with it. I believe the Packers, they're different than the Colts with their running game. They don't, obviously, Aaron Jones is a great running back. He's not Jonathan Taylor, per se, but they mix it up with how they run with both Taylor and A.J. Dillon. Tough runners. They have a variety of run schemes. They also get you outside the tackles, I think, a little bit more then the Indianapolis Colts tried to get Taylor outside the tackles. And there were there were times that I saw the Packers offensive line uh, handle Linville Joseph much better than the Colts offensive line did. The Colts have just not had a really good offensive line for two years. It's been sort of a, a myth that they have a really good offensive line uh, for the last few years. They really haven't. The Packers did a better job. And so you did see the the, the Packers be able to run the ball and neutralize Joseph and Sue uh, a little better than than the Colts were able to do. Uh, Miles Sanders last night got 20 plus carries, 21, I think a buck 43 on the ground, two rushing yeah. touchdowns, Mosh. Um, man, for a guy that, I mean, I remember conversations we've had in the past about, you know, sometimes he's great, Jekyll and Hyde type, maybe uh, esque. Is he a bell cow type of back? A really strong showing last night, and he's just been solid. All year. So uh, I guess the question is just uh, give us your assessment on what you've seen from this rushing, uh, this rushing offense, particularly with Miles Sanders. The amazing thing, Ryan, is that Kaplan and I were just having a discussion last week. If I were to tell, have told you going into the year that Miles Sanders was going to be on pace for about 1,400 yards and 12 to 14 touchdowns, which he's on, but I was also going to tell you he is not someone who's going to have five to 10 rushes of 50 or more yards. Like he did, you know, first and second year, 
you would say, well, that doesn't sound like Miles Sanders. That sounds more like you, what you're just like a bell cow guy who's getting you, you know, three, four yards of carry, five, six, seven, you know, sort of, um, you know, just grinding it out. And he yeah. has been that guy. And I think the one thing that has stood out about him this year that I sort of feel validated. I know Adam did, does too. I, I think this guy was unfairly knocked earlier in his career because he was injured a lot as being a guy who's not a tough runner. Or because he was so explosive to the edges, there was like he dances too much. And I've I've never felt that, A, he danced too much. I, always, I did feel earlier in his career he didn't follow blocking well, which is a little bit different than always stuttering and being indecisive. It's just hitting the wrong hole. And, B, I've always thought he ran tough between the tackles. And you see, saw that last night. I, I think there were times where he's taken head on a couple of guys, and if he wasn't making a miss, he was at least trying to get extra yards. I mean, he doesn't go down – on first contact, he really has been, when asked to be, not many times, but when asked to be, a bell cow, he's been able to do that. There are a couple of games that stick out this year where he's had at least 18 to 20 carries, um, and he's gotten the job done, and he stayed healthy. By the way, he's also catching the ball. He doesn't get thrown the ball out to him a lot, yep. but not, remember all the drops from the year before and, and two years ago? Those are gone as well. Yeah, uh, and sticking with the offense and the ground attack, well, just in general, I mean, Jalen Hurts, obviously the story, just history-making in a lot of statistical ways. And I just, man, for someone like me who who questioned him going into the year, like, let's see, this is a big season. I, I don't know what to expect just yet. I'm not ready to crown him. The guy, I mean, my goodness, all those questions are out the window. I just feel like a sense of calm. Every time the Eagles have the ball offensively, it's just the, the turnaround. Not that he was terrible, but still a, a fantastic turnaround. Just speak to what you see from him as the, the, the leader and the, the, the command that he has of this offense right now is just so special to watch. It really is. I am one who also, like you, you know, went into this year with questions about his ceiling. You know, I mean, it, it's not like he had the greatest year last year. As a passing quarterback, he's been so much better. Uh, even when he runs now, they're, they're design runs or they're, they're runs where he just, it's not running because there's pressure. There's running because there's the ability to see the openings and run. I mean, last night especially, he had about four or five runs where the avenue is there and it made sense to do it and he did it. Now he took a couple of shots and that's always going to be difficulty, but he's been a great player this year, yeah. great quarterback like you. I wondered about his ceiling going into the year. I think a lot of people did. I don't run from it. I don't think it was unfair to question no. what the ceiling was. So uh, he has answered the bell at every time, and um, we'll see where this thing goes. I mean, the, the one thing is that he, he has shown you he can beat you with his legs, but he also can beat you with his arm. And even though he only had about 150 yards yet last night or whatever it was, 165, something like that, that throw to Quez Watkins – that was a beautiful throw. He has become one of the best deep ball throwers in the National Football League. Quez Watkins was not wide open on that play yeah. like Quez normally gets open, but that was just a well, well-placed deep ball. There was a third and 12, too. I, I don't remember. It was third and 12. I forget who he zipped it to, but that was just a throw. It was just mm -hmm. like, wow. Yeah, I forget, too. But, yeah, it's just it, he, he can do it all right now, it seems, not to you know get too – uh, googly eyed, but I mean, it is a little bit deserving. Quick question for you, Moshe, not to get too, too sidetracked. I know we have a lot to talk about for the present in mm -hmm. this season, but Miles Sanders, all right, Gil and I still have to get into this uh, as well. Do you give him a contract for me? I mean, man, I'm impressed. Love the guy right now. I just don't, I don't see how you re-sign him uh, for a variety of reasons, but maybe that's not what Howie is, is thinking. Well, I mean, I think that that question sort of has layers to it. I mean, uh, do, do you write him a blank check? No, Ryan. Like you're saying, you, you, you do not. And if he gets, you know, he's going to be a free agent. Uh, at least he's gonna, most likely going to hit the free agent market. And we'll see what kind of market error out is, is for him. And if there's a team out there that sort of offers him more money because that team has a ton of money, like the Jaguars did last offseason, where they sort of overpaid to make sure they got certain guys, then – then I think he, he, he doesn't come back. But if he wants to be an Eagle, I would think that the, there will be an offer made, and I think that they'll try to be fair and competitive uh, about it. I don't think they're just going to lowball him and say, hey, we offered Miles Sanders a deal he didn't, he didn't, he didn't accept. 
But yeah. I mean, he's a big part of what they're doing this year, and he's yeah. really good. And the second part of that is that if you if you thought maybe this would be the a sec, a good second year for Kenny Gainwell, and he would show you that he's got the ability to be the Miles Sanders going forward, well, you certainly have not seen that. I mean, he's he's not been bad. He just has not been dynamic, explosive uh, type of runner. So I think that there will be an attempt to re-sign my. Sanders, but it has to be something that works for the team, well, not just the player. And interestingly yeah. enough, guys, the free agent class of running backs is going to be interesting. Josh Jacobs, Saquon Barkley, Tony Pollard, Kareem Hunt, Jamal Williams, Jeff Wilson, Mostert, um, you got, and, and, and Miles Sanders. So it's not like Sanders is going to hit the free agent market as the only guy available, which has been like most seasons. You, you, you go to free agency. And there's only a handful of names. There is a lot of I mean, Josh Jacobs had 300 yards yesterday rushing the ball. Uh, Saquon's been unbelievable. Tony Pollard, that's going to be a very interesting story to watch how that all. I mean, that guy's probably going to get someone throwing a big boat of money at him unless Dallas franchises him. And, you know, they've already made the mistake of paying a running back once uh, in, in the recent past. So I think this story is going to be very interesting. Kareem Hunt, we've heard his name a lot about the Eagles. Like, should they have gone out and gotten him? And here's Miles Sanders having a great uh, season and a great night last night. And, Moshe, I want to ask you, I, I, we talked about this earlier. If the Eagles were to lose a, a game against the, the seven teams that are currently in the playoffs right now, Washington's the seventh seed, uh, San Francisco, Dallas, the Giants, Minnesota, would they lose because their offense let them down or their defense let them down? Ah, uh, there's a C in there, Mike. There's an option C you didn't bring up. And it's funny you didn't bring up because I've been thinking about it for, for a couple of days now. And it's, it's also interesting that the Eagles just played the Packers last night because the Packers should remind us all of what it's like to have teams that win 13, 14, or 15 games but lose in the playoffs because of special Teams. I mean, the Packers are infamous for losing games in the going back to 2014 when they had the Seattle Seahawks. They were up 11 on the Seahawks, right? This is the year the Seahawks went to the Super Bowl for the second straight time and lost to New England. They were up 11 in that game. Conference championship. Russell Wilson brings them down, scores a touchdown. Then the third string tight end botches a onside kick, gives the ball back to the Seahawks. Then they go score. Uh, and take the the lead and win that game. Even last year, didn't the Packers have a, a special teams breakdown? Yeah, oh, the- listen, Bosch, I brought it up earlier. They lost that game against San Francisco later. I think they had a punt blocked. I mean, they yep. were awful in that game last year. Now, Philly's that, special teams be- problem has been more on kick coverage than it has been uh, blocking uh, punt blocks and stuff uh, like that. I, I don't know about that. I think you, I think you could say the punter has struggled at times. They've had two fake punts executed against them. The kickoff coverage is also there. Jake Elliott missed a point after attempt. So their issues oh, listen, on special teams. Their special widespread. teams have been a problem. And last night, it, I thought it factored into why the defense struggled. Because as yep. Sirianni said, look, put that on me. We had short fields. I, I think the defense, and, and part of the difference was, the Eagles' defense had been in short fields before, but they give up three. Last night, they mm-hmm. were giving up six. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, you could say that defense, but you give Aaron Rodgers a short field, and it doesn't matter if he's four and seven, two and six, or ten and two. He's going to figure out a way to beat you there. And so that's why I really do believe that special teams, if there's going to be a downfall for the Eagles, it'll be that more than anything. Now, Mike, to your point, if, I, if you're just going to give me offense or defense – let, let's find out about Jordan Davis and C.J. Gardner-Johnson and mm-hmm. what's going on with them. Because obviously if C.J. Gardner-Johnson's lost for a long time, they're in some dire straits. At that we, We've talked all year long about safety as the one position where if they had a big injury, they'd be in a lot of trouble because they just don't have a lot of depth there. I mean, it, Reed Blankenship made a nice play. It's good to see him uh, do that and step up. But you do not want a rookie free agent safety having to start for you when you're trying to win a Super Bowl. And then – you know, you still got eight games or more to play, and even you get another injury there, and you're down to, what, Andre Sachere or Kevon Wallace, who, who's already low on the totem pole. So that's that, that's what I'm curious to find out in the next few days is how long-term the injuries might be for them. Talking with Jeff Mosher, give him a follow at Jeff Mosher, NFL, inside the birds.com. Mosher, who's the biggest threat in the NFC right now for the Eagles? The 49ers. Mm. That's what I think I the 49ers... Said. I think the 49ers have a really nasty defense. I mean, just like a punishing, 
nasty, aggressive. D'Amico Ryan's has done an unbelievable job with that yeah. defense. He and then they can also next year. He should be. And they also can play ball control. I think Jimmy Garoppolo is playing better than people want to credit him for. He's got weapons and Debo and Ayuk and McCaffrey, Kittle. As long as they're healthy, good offensive line, I think that they're they can do a lot of what the Eagles do, which is running the ball well. They obviously don't run with the quarterback, but they run the ball well. They ball control well. They play great defense. They cause turnovers. And I don't. They were in the. They they beat Dallas in Dallas last year, if I'm not mistaken, to go to the NFC Championship yes, game. Yeah, yeah. But I don't think they'd be afraid per se to come into a place like the Link and you know take on the Eagles. Sure, it'll be intimidating. Sure, it'll be you know tough. But they're they're kind of battle tested. Yeah, that's a good team right there. No, I I've liked San Francisco all year, even going back to when they were like you know under 500. I just feel Same when they're here. healthy when they're healthy, that they are uh, the strongest team. And, and look, I think you got to look at Philadelphia. We talked about it. They are getting through a stretch of games here where they are not at maximum health, and yet they are finding ways to do it. And we talked about the difference right now in this season. Dallas lost to Green Bay. Philadelphia beat them. That mm-hmm. right now, if, if how different is this season looking if Dallas was able to figure out a way to beat a pretty bad Green Bay team? Yeah, I mean, they're just the, the pressure on the Eagles right now as these weeks go by just isn't there because now the Eagles only have one loss. Dallas has what two losses? The Giants have three losses. So they're, the Eagles are kind of starting three, to pull right? away here. No, I'm yeah. sorry, Dallas is three. You're right. Yeah. So if, they're losing out on their opportunity to kind of try to bridge the gap and make that second game against the Eagles really matter. Well, and look, you know, Dallas has a schedule coming up where they've been waiting for their spot where they say, oh, Philly's played Houston and Jacksonville. They've got Houston and Jacksonville and Indianapolis next week. So they have a shot to win these next three before they play Philadelphia Mm -hmm. to keep the pressure on. So we'll see how that goes. But how different things would be if they were to take care of business against Green Bay. They're saying, well, the Eagles haven't beaten anybody. You lost to Green Bay. Philadelphia found a way to get that job done against them. Now, my question for you, Mosher, is we've talked about this Eagle defense. I think most people want to focus on the defensive side of the ball in terms of their flaws. Of the teams, Minnesota, Dallas, San Francisco, Washington, the Giants, they are the playoff teams. Does any of their style of offenses worry you against the Eagles' defense? Well, any team that you, I think that can devote to the run and play action off of it um, can give the Eagles some issues. You know, so I do think Dallas could uh, in a playoff game. I mean, da- Dallas could lose to the Eagles again, but in a close one and beat them in in the playoffs. That's what the that's what the Niners did to the Rams last year. Or the, yeah. the Rams did to the Niners. The Rams lost both division games against the Niners, then beat them in the uh, in the playoffs. So it can happen. I just think you have to have a strong running game. To beat the Eagles. So Dallas has one. I, the Giants have a strong running game, but I just don't think they have enough firepower offensively to, to really hang with the Eagles the way Dallas does. Now, Minnesota will be interesting. I thought they had a terrible game plan offensively, not just defensively, but offensively in their first battle against the Eagles. I think they were trying to be too cute and attack uh, with uh, sort of attack vertically. And they kind of gave up on Dalvin Cook early. And I wonder if they're looking back at how they how they tr- didn't really look to run the ball with Dalvin Cook um, and after seeing how the Eagles have struggled against the run and ha- done it the week before against the Lions, and maybe they would attack differently. They now have TJ Hawkinson. So I, I, would be, I, I think the second time around they could be a better threat than the 24-6 to six showing. I think that was the final score, right, 24-8 or something like that? Yeah. Um, well, and that's I, still, we, I still think I favor the Eagles. We brought that up earlier, Moshe, is that Minnesota you've played – and your defense had a good game plan against them for that week. Dallas obviously was playing with Cooper Rush, so that changes the dynamic of that matchup. So uh, that's two of the playoff teams currently. Washington, you split with them. Uh, So that would be interesting if you got stuck playing Washington. You haven't seen the Giants yet. Um, And then San Francisco. So uh, everybody talks about this Eagles defense. The The thing is, though, there's not really a team. Like, if you had to play Tennessee in the playoffs, that would be a game where you're like, that's just a terrible matchup. I don't know. I mean, I guess Sunday will, will let us know. I, Tennessee is so one-dimensional. Of course I expect Derrick Henry to have a big game against the Eagles because he has one against every team. But can they 
can they score, you know, 24 points against the Eagles? I, I, the, I, know, I know Tennessee has a good defense, so maybe they can hold the, the Eagles under 24. But honestly, I, I, I thought the Packers might win uh, last night. I picked the Packers to win. They, they clearly showed up. And, I, and my, all week I was kind of feeling that way. I don't get the sense that Tennessee is going to come in here and, and beat the Eagles. I really don't. Uh, I could be wrong. I, I understand why you would say it's a terrible matchup because they run the ball so well and the Eagles don't stop the run. But I, I can't get like fired up about Traylon well, Burks and Robert Woods beating. The, you know, the like, point you made is is the one. Is it's a team that can run the ball and they also play good defense. Like some of these teams that run the ball, they're you know you mentioned the Giants run the ball well, but they don't do much else really well. Uh, the right. defense is just okay. Indianapolis was kind of like that where they run the ball well. Their defense is good. It's not great. And so these teams that want to run the ball and shorten the game, the problem is, you know, and, and look, Indianapolis, the game was 17-16. I mean, so, mm-hmm. uh, but Philadelphia should. You want to play that style? We'll beat you that style. You want to score more points? We'll beat you 40-33. You want to play this yeah. game? We'll beat you 17-16. They have shown, guys, that they can win 40-33, 17-16, 24-7. Any style mm-hmm. of game you've thrown at them so far, they have found – a way to get it done. We'll see if they can continue to do it. Moshe is back on Wednesday for football at four right here on the Sports Bash Live. And check out InsideTheBirds.com uh, and the Inside the Birds podcast, which has plenty more on the Eagles' 40-33 win over Green Bay on Sunday Night Football. Moshe, thank you, buddy. All right, fellas. Have a great one. Good conversation with Jeff Mosher here on the Sports Bash.